Hey guys, um, <clears throat> sorry for the uh, the little hiatus on um, on those uh, Killbrook Earl Spence videos. Um, I wound up getting the flu right after, like the next day, and I was just wrecked for a couple of weeks. Um, I I didn't have a voice. Like it was pretty horrible, but um, I'm feeling better now. Um, I haven't been to work in a while either, <laughs> so things just been kind of kind of crazy. What a way to start the new year. But um, we're gonna go ahead and get into this video. And it's just um, Peterson versus Diaz. And it's really interesting. Um, and this is for fight prep for uh, Peterson fighting Errol Spence tomorrow, which um, I think is going to be a surprisingly good fight, you guys. You know, Errol Spence is saying it's going to be one-sided. Um, and, you know, to be honest, that very well could be. You know, um, Errol Spence is very good at going to the body. And we've seen, I think that it was Matisse that knocked... Um, Peterson out with a body shot, right? Um, one second. So it was Matisse that knocked him out with a body shot, I'm pretty sure. Um, and if anything like that happens in the fight, obviously it's going to look really one-sided. But to be honest, Peterson is a very good fighter. Um, he doesn't have the, the technique, you know, that everyone's excited about for, like, that Errol Spence has. You know, he throw he's, er, um, Errol Spence has great posture. He stands up straight, really straight. He looks really strong. He punches hard. He punches fast. Um, and he throws good combinations, you know, and that's part of the reason why people are so excited about him is because they, it's, you know, they call it the eye test, I guess. And uh, Peterson doesn't look as good or as polished, you know, in that regard. Um, so people kind of sleep on him a little bit. But he's a pretty good fighter. And I do think that um, unless he gets knocked out with a body shot from Errol Spence in like the first or the second round, he's going to give Errol Spence some trouble. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the into the fight. I think we're going to do two rounds. We're going to do two rounds of uh, Peterson Diaz um, and talk about, you know, what Diaz is doing a little bit that Errol Spence can mimic. Uh, and what Peterson's doing that's going to be effective against um, Errol Spence. And I will be doing some more of the Errol spence Kelbrook fight uh, for sure. Um, I'll be doing one uh, after this round. <clears throat> um, I'm not sure when it'll go up, though. Uh, obviously, hopefully before the fight, you know what I'm saying? But, um, but let's get into the fight and see what's going on. So immediately... Uh, they take the center of the stage and look at look at Peterson's active guard. You know, like this is something that is super important, you guys, for for boxing, especially against somebody like Errol Spence, uh, who's very um, who's very stagnant in their guard, who just keeps their hands up and plods forward, um, and they don't they don't. The biggest thing that this does is it allows you to control the distance, right? If you're fainting in or you're using, like, head movement, your opponent thinks you're going to be setting up a shot and they got to worry about that timing and that rhythm of you throwing punches off of that guard, right? Like, very very Lomachenko-like, right? Remember in those videos when he dips in and then he'll come back and then he'll faint again and then he'll come in and dip in and throw a straight left hand off of that dip? <clears throat> it's very similar to that. And... If you're able to do that and you're able to control that space with that head movement right here, right? So dips in, ducks down, dipping in, right? He can shoot a jab off that dip and um, uh, his opponent has to respect these as feints and as, as control um, even though he's still able to get shots off. But um, it allows you to stop your opponent from setting up their punches and that's that's really a big part of boxing is setting up your shots, you know? Notice in... Um, in the first half of the the Ward Kovalev fight, Kovalev did great, right? In the first fight, Kovalev did great. I, I think Kovalev did great in both fights or in both halves, personally. But it was very obvious that people thought that he was fading, and all that was happening was that Ward stopped letting Kovalev set up his punches, right? If we're not talking about Ward's offense at all, um, when when Ward would notice that he was setting up his punches, Kovalev. Uh, Ward would just take a step back, right? Although he wasn't controlling the space, he knew that that Kovalev was controlling the space, so he would take that ability away from him, right? Take that advantage away from him by not allowing him to utilize that that space effectively by just taking a step back. And then he was able to get Kovalev to just throw punches at him, and that stopped Kovalev's offense from being as effective. Um, 
And that's basically what you want to do. And you can do the same thing by controlling the space uh, and making your opponent not feel comfortable actually uh, setting his punches up. <clears throat> anyway, this is interesting right here. So um, there aren't very many instances in this fight where um, Diaz does this, right? Or Peterson does this. But it's a, a flashing lead hand, right? Um, Peterson gets his left, uh, his right glove up to catch a shot over the top. Maybe it's a hook, right? Um, but Diaz takes lead foot dominance and throws a left hand to the body. But Peterson takes a step back, right? And this is exactly how, um, as we saw in um, the breakdown for Chris Algieri, um, Chris Algieri and Errol Spence. Errol Spence had basically one style of offense, right? It's flash the lead hand uh, and take a step in, uh, take lead foot dominance, and then throw that left hand, that that you know bombing left hand. Um, and then he had uh, basically that only that as his his only other approach to make um, offense against uh, Kell Brook as well. Um, now, if Peterson can utilize this, right? And remember where I just talked about controlling the space, right? He sees that Diaz is looking to set up a shot. And what does he do? He just takes a step back, right? And that stops the shot from landing. He can stop him from setting up his shots. He can make it so that Errol Spence is maybe more likely to just walk in and throw punches rather than um, uh, setting them up, right? Even though they're not, it's not a great setup anyway. It's very predictable, right? But he may be able to take that away from him. Now, Peterson doesn't do this very much, right? He doesn't do it very often in the fight, so we'll see if he does. But this is really interesting too, right? So along with that active guard, he dips, leans in, he throws his right hand, right? But this is not a real right hand. This is just probing, you know? And we'll see what that does later. But as you can see, he doesn't put any power on it. He's just showing it to Diaz to see how he's going to react. And then Diaz looks to counter with that left hand, and Peterson is able to make a read, right? And he still gets his arm in the way and blocks it. But Peterson showing that he's got some skills, you know, only in so early in the fight. And then, bam, he does the same thing. Shoots that right hand, <clears throat> rolls the left hook, that, like, left cross or um, right cross that Diaz might have thrown. He's able to work his way on the inside. Really interesting, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, really interesting. Even though he doesn't wind up getting the best of that exchange, right? But it's showing that he, he has the skills to kind of you know, find his way in. You know, Peterson, I think, is definitely an above-average fighter. Again, right, probing, right, shooting that jab out there, and then he gets uh, Diaz to uh, react, right? He Without committing to the shot, without putting himself in danger. And this is also going to be something that's very important because sometimes, sometimes um, in, the, in the Kell Brook fight, uh, Errol Spence would counter the jab. You know, he would see that jab coming and he would come back over the top of his opponent's jab. You know, so being able to bait that and figure that stuff out is going to be really important for Peterson if he's going to have any success. Now, this is really interesting too. Remember again, we just showed that right hand, that probing right hand. So Peterson does it right here and he works his way in and lands a body shot, right? So it's not a real right hand again. He's shooting it. Uh, let's look at his feet. So he's shooting this right hand. He takes a step and he shoots the right hand at the same time. Now, most people use the left hand, right? They use their jab, right? Like Errol Spence does. So he shoots the jab because he wants to land that left hand. But Peterson sees the opening for the body shot right here because of um, the high guard that Diaz always puts himself in. Now, this is really interesting because in the Kell Brook fight, we saw a lot of times when, especially when, when Brook would land the first punch, that... Errol Spence would kind of shell up, right? Not He wouldn't move off the line. He wouldn't uh, slip or roll shots. Uh, but he would just cover up and he would put his guard up and kind of, you know, get stuck there, you know. He would still battle back at the end of the combinations, right, trying to get the last punch. But, um, but he would stay there on the line. And I think that this would be, this might be a really effective form of offense for Peterson. Right, kind of next leveling that whole uh, jab, uh, jab straight right hand or jab straight left hand by probing with the right hand instead, and then coming in with the body shot. You know, it takes a very experienced and a very talented fighter to understand that you're going to be able to use your power hand to set up other punches. Right, most people think you only set punches up with the jab, but here Peterson is setting up the left hook to the body with the fake right hand. Beautiful boxing from him. 
<clears throat> now, a lot of people are probably saying that, oh, you know, but he's doing this to Diaz. Diaz is a, you know, crappy fighter. To be honest, you know, Diaz needs to work a little bit on his technique. You know, his hips kind of get stuck in place, so he doesn't look as fancy as um, Errol Spence. But Diaz is a very good fighter, you guys. Like, he's like, you know, four foot three fighting in the welterweight division. You know, I don't know how tall he really is, but the dude is, he's pretty short for fighting in this division, and he does very well. Diaz is actually a very good fighter, as we got to see also in the breakdown between um, um, Crawford and uh, Diaz for the Julius and Dango fight. The only problem is his technique, the way that he shifts his weight a little bit, it kind of limits him into not always being able to shift his weight. But he's a very good fighter. Now, they're battling here for lead hand dominate uh, dominance. Uh, usually very important. <clears throat> usually very important for setting up your punches, right? If somebody were to take Errol Spence's lead hand away, right? So if... If... Um, oops. Let's go back one more. So if they're doing this, right? Um, Errol Spence and... Um, Peterson, Errol Spence may be able to stop, or uh, Peterson may be able to stop Errol Spence from coming in and taking that lead foot dominance uh, and unleashing his left hand, which might make Errol Spence have to find a new style of offense for that fight. You know, whether it be counter punching or whether it be uh, fainting with his right hand first, right, or taking angles. You know, well, we'd have to see. But this is again, this is also something that's very inconsistent for Peterson, right? Just like, so the first time we saw uh, Diaz looking to set up his shots, right, with the lead hand, uh, Peterson just took a step back, and now he's fighting for lead hand dominance in that regard, right? That time, I think he kind of, um, this is, now this is really interesting too, um, it looks like, goddamn, so, such a long video, but, um, so right here, it looks like Diaz is looking to set up that left hand again, right? So he goes to set it up, and Peterson looks like he's timing him, right? So if, if Diaz were to step in with that left hand and throw it, he might have gotten cracked with that shot. You know, I think he still does kind of get tapped with it. Yeah, right on the front of the face. But really interesting that Peterson is wary of this style of offense, right? The lead hand, lead hand, and then um, left hand, you know, to the body or to the head. And, and Diaz hasn't really thrown it yet. He's only thrown it one time. <clears throat> now, boom. Now Diaz does come back after getting cracked with that shot, right? Um, and Peterson smartly is able to move off the line. But this is exactly what he's going to have to contend with when he throws punches at Peterson or at, at Errol Spence because of the fact that Errol Spence loves to get the last hit in. You know, it's it's something that great amateurs learn. Um, they understand, you know, when their opponent's out of position, when they throw punches, they're out of position, and that's when you want to counter them. You want to throw punches too. It's even more important in the amateurs because you've got that headgear. The likelihood that you're going to get knocked out is much less. Um, and you're trying to catch your opponent out of position, like I said. Um, so it is interesting that we do get to see um, Peterson moving off the line. Not staying there, you know, and not trying to hug, not trying to hold, like in a, you know, in the Kelbrook fashion, right? Uh, it was interesting that Kelbrook didn't move off the line as much as I thought he would in, in their fight. Now, this is bad. This is straight up bad for Peterson, right? We've seen a few different ways of him taking away his opponent's lead left hand, right? Or um, uh, set up for punches. He countered, right? Which landed flush. He just took a step back. But now we see Diaz probing with the right hand or the left hand just like Peterson did and then going to the body. And look at how Peterson just gets stuck on the line, right? He's just walking off. He's just moving, you know, kind of plodding, not turning, not twisting, right? Not not shooting to one side, not and not controlling uh, Diaz either. Not using his gloves and his hands to push him off or to control him, to stop him from transferring his weight, right? And if he uses this style of defense against uh, Errol Spence, he's going to get completely smashed. Um, uh, Errol Spence is just going to be way too unforgiving for that style of defense. Uh, he does have some good body shots of his own, though, you know. But I don't expect, um, although he did do it sometimes in the Kell Brook fight, I don't expect Errol Spence to really be walking forward um, and just allowing Peterson to throw punches at him. But who knows? You know, that might actually be something that happens. <clears throat> now it's interesting too because Peterson fights on the inside, right? And 
like we know that Peterson's really tough and that he fights really well on the inside. But it's going to be interesting because does Peterson's coach want him to fight on the inside with Errol Spence? Errol Spence is so good at creating space, pulling his hips out, um, and landing body shots that it might not be the most effective thing for him, you know, but we'll have to see. Again, Peterson doing a good job of probing with the right hand, right, and then coming in with another left hook. <clears throat> And then staying on the line, unfortunately, to get hit with counters, right? Which is going to be a big problem for him against Errol Spence. <laughs> I think we're going to do two rounds. So I'm going to kind of speed it up a little bit. Not bad right there. Probing with the with the jab. Getting um, Diaz to duck and, and come under and walk him into a shot. You know, so Peterson's showing that he understands how his opponents are going to get away from his punches. The left-handed, the southpaws. Uh, and how to walk them into them, you know. Uh, to be honest, I think Peterson's a really good fighter. Um, I don't know. I don't think he's as good as fighter as Kell Brook. But also, Kell Brook didn't use all of his boxing skills in their fight, you know. Um, he didn't control the distance between them. And he didn't control um, Errol Spence after he threw punches, you know. Which are two skills that we've seen him use in other fights. <clears throat> but not in that fight. Um, so, you know, for all intents and purposes, Peterson may look like he does better than Kell Brook, um, but Kell Brook didn't fight to the level that I think he could have. Um, but anyway, moving on. Some probing, you know, not really anything going on there. Not bad right there. You know, this is going to be really important, landing a body shot and then circling around. Um, he's, now look, this is something that after he lands that shot, you know, Diaz takes an angle on him, right? And then boom, boom, boom. He's able to land all these shots, right? Um, simply by taking an angle and fighting Peterson on the inside. And for Peterson, he's really going to need to work on moving off the line. You know, I, th I thought there were some better examples of that, of Peterson moving off the line after throwing punches. Um, but instances like that make me he heavily lean toward um, Errol Spence as being the, the, the winner of the fight. Because that's where Errol Spence is going to get all his work done. Is when when Peterson initiates an attack and then doesn't move off the line. Um, and even if Peterson winds up being um, being successful with his, his offense, because he stays on the line with his opponent, um, if he does, um, Errol Spence is easily going to be able to find him. Um, now look at this. This is really interesting, right? Now, the reason that, that that's important, again is because of Peterson's active guard, right? Now, we'll get to look at it, right? Coming in, ducking, rolling, you know, slipping to that side, slipping to this side, some good head movement right there. Now, he's got all that defense, right, where he can move and he can roll, he can change, he can pivot. But when he winds up staying on the line, he winds up being a stagnant fighter as well. And I think that's going to be a huge problem for him against, against Errol Spence if that's the way that he chooses to fight. Again... After he throws those punches, he stays on the line, and that's going to be a huge problem for him against Errol. Um, even though I think um, Errol Spence is going to be probably an easy target for Peterson to hit because Pe because Errol Spence doesn't have any you know any real head movement, he doesn't move off the line either. Um, because of the fact that Peterson stays there after he lands those shots, makes me think that Errol Spence is going to have a very easy time finding him. Shit, I can't let it run too long or I'll get flagged. <clears throat> Not bad right there. Shoots that jab, knows the counter is coming, moves off the line and lands a body shot. <laughs> Good guy Diaz. He probably should have just punched him in the face. But, but it's interesting now that Peterson's guard has kind of slowed down, right? Notice in the, in the beginning of the round, it was pretty active. You know, good head movement, rolling, slipping. Uh, but now he's kind of stuck. Shooting the jab, you know, probing in, coming in, you know, fig trying to figure out how um, Diaz is going to react. But we already know he's going to come in with the jab, right? Or counter with the jab. Um, but Peterson, you know, not making any... Um, not making any reads off of it, right? Not countering it, not making an adjustment. Uh, and then you find him throwing a punch, 
and kind of waiting for Diaz to not react to the probes or to the to the feints, right? To the setup punches. You know, not bad right there, right? After throwing all those shots, he's able to move off the line. And that's exactly what he's going to need to do against uh, Errol Spence is constantly be moving off the line. We're going to have to see the quote-unquote boxer version of of Lamont Peterson if he has any chance to win in this fight. Um, and also, he's going to have to not wait for Errol Spence to make the first move. If he's allowing Errol Spence to come in first uh, and throw punches, especially because of the fact that we saw how he deals with it when he shells up, Errol Spence is going to destroy him. So here we go into the second round. Controlling the distance, right, with the lead hand. Not bad, but he's committing to those shots, which makes me think he might be able to be countered, right? Obviously, Diaz is going to have a hard time countering because he's three feet tall. Um, but, um, you know, <clears throat> I don't really like this at all. He does take the lead foot dominance first. And this is something that, you know, I really like about Diaz, too. I think Diaz is a very good fighter, like I said. Also has an active guard, right? Dipped, roll. And he's easily able to get away from those shots with his head movement. Um, he does need to work again, like I said, on transitioning his weight um, and figuring out how to do that more effectively so that he doesn't get stuck in certain positions, <clears throat> particularly when he throws his left hook. But um, but it's interesting, too, because Lamont Peterson looks like he's having a lot of difficulty landing punches, but that also has to do with um, Diaz's head movement, right? His active guard and... I don't think that Peterson is going to have the same problems landing punches against Errol Spence as he is against um, against Diaz. I think that, to be honest, I think Diaz is a craftier fighter. I think that he's, although he's not as physically gifted, I'll say, that's a, that's a cop-out word, um, he's not as physically attuned to boxing as Errol Spence is. I think that he's, he's just a little bit better... Um, with with his tools and knowing what to do with his head movement uh even though he's a midget no offense diaz i'm a midget too bro hold on give me one second guys As you can see, still a little bit under the weather, guys. So sorry about that. Anyway, again, right, Peterson coming, throwing punches, and uh, Diaz able to counter, right, boom, and throw body shots, right? P uh, Peterson not able to get completely off the line because he's moving straight back. Again, that's another huge problem that he's going to have um, if he's not moving off the line against Errol Spence. <clears throat> Oh, shit, I think I missed the weigh-ins. Damn. I guess I'll watch them after this video. Now, this is interesting right here, right? This is really interesting because Peter's showing Peterson's showing a skill that he hasn't really shown, right? Controlling the distance. Look at how he uses both his left and his right hand to control Diaz, right? Now, if you look at it, remember Diaz's really active guard? How he's dipping, slipping, rolling, right? As soon as Peterson starts controlling that distance, right? Diaz, Diaz has to give it up, right? He's no longer He no longer feels comfortable walking in there and rolling, slipping, right? Peterson's able to take that away from him, and then Diaz has to move away. Now Diaz is moving away, and now he's in the corner because he doesn't feel comfortable occupying any of that space that Peterson is punching in because Peterson is controlling it. <clears throat> and now he winds up, you know, completely out of position. Uh, even though, you know, I do think that Diaz gets the better of it right here, right? Peterson does land a body shot right there, but he eats that big hook. Um, even though I think that Diaz did a better job right in the exchange, uh, Peterson did everything right right there. And I think that if Peterson can do that, if Peterson can control Errol Spence's lead hand and keep Errol Spence's hands at bay, because, Pe because Errol Spence does have a habit of doing that, of just putting his high guard up um, and waiting for you to kind of slow down so he can set up his offense uh, against you instead, Peterson might be able to make Errol Spence kind of look limited in some some avenues, right? Like there was the scene in the in round two where after Kell Brook started picking up on the counters, Errol Spence started walking forward and not using the jab because he was getting countered so much. 
and Errol Spence was uh, Kell Brook was able to kind of tee off on him and throw punches. Um, you may have a very similar style of fight or like similar looking uh, periods in the fight. Um, if Peterson can do the same thing and control Errol Spence simply by throwing fake punches at him, right? I don't want to say fake, right? But probing shots, right? Uh, feints, right? And just controlling his hands so that he can find an opening, specifically the one that he showed in the first round where he would throw a right hand up top and then throw that body shot. Now, this is really good right here. Boom, throws that right hand again. Now, he's shown it to the body a few times, right? And now he goes, he ducks down. He, This is beautiful, you guys. He shoots the right hand, boom, and he ducks down, making it look like he's going to go to the body. Uh, and I don't know how Diaz gets the read on it to know that it's going to be a, a, a punch to the head. You know, that's something you can only see in the ring probably, like when he's right in front of you. But for us, right, it, he really sells the body shot, and he's able to get off of it. And then even better, even better, after he, mo he misses, he rolls and he turns off the ropes, or he turns off the line. You know, Diaz almost catches them and get him with a shot. But that's exactly what he's going to need to do after every power punch against Errol Spence. Um, because if he stays on the on the line with Errol Spence, like I said before, he's just going to get pounded. You know, he's he's going to he's going to take some big shots. He's going to get hurt. Good guy, Diaz. Uh, tapping him on the body. Hey, hey, hey. Break, bro. Break. And then they break. I like that. Good sportsmanship. Now, just so, to illustrate my point about controlling the distance between the two fighters, it doesn't take a lot, you know? It doesn't take a lot. One little feint, one little probe, one little anything. So we're going to put it in slow-mo. Now, Peterson looks like he's going to walk forward, right? Oh, shit, did I miss it already? Ha, 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 ha. So Peterson looks like he's going to walk forward. He's going to try and set something up. And look at Diaz, right? He just gives him one little crouch right there. Boom, ducks down. And while Peterson was moving forward... All of a sudden, he has to shell up and cover his guard, right? Cover his face. He's like, oh, shit, he's about to punch. But Diaz doesn't do anything. And then he's able to take a step back and create some space, right? Now, a lot of times, you'll see fighters like um, Erislandi Lara. They'll do that, but they'll actually throw a punch, right? But they'll do it when they're on the ropes, and they do it so that they can create space and move off the ropes, right? That's the same exact technique, but this one's a little less dangerous, right? You don't actually have to throw the whole punch, right? And that's one thing that people, like when they're learning to feint and they're learning to probe, that they, they don't understand about um, not throwing and not committing to your shots. But look at how easy it was for Diaz right there to control the space between them and stop Peterson from coming forward, stop Peterson from setting up a shot, uh, simply by ducking down, changing levels a little bit, right? And giving him a little bit of a feint, you know? That's how simple boxing can be. And then very crafty, Right, right after that, he gives him the same look, and, Dia and Peterson doesn't believe him, and he kind of sneaks in a left hand right there. Uh, now, it's not important that whether it lands or not; it's the fact that he's doing it and he's working on stuff. He's being crafty, right? <clears throat> now, I would definitely not recommend this style of fighting for Peterson. Maybe I would actually. I don't know. We'll have to see. You know, where Errol Spence goes with his his offense or his defense, um, if he's, how much he's learned from the Charlo brothers um, or the the Charlo brother, Lil, uh, Lil J. <laughs> um, but um, I'm not sure that just walking into Errol Spence is going to be a good idea for him. I think that Errol Spence will wind up just shooting some left hands to the body and catching him. Um, and I think that would be a big mistake for Peterson. But anyway, as you can see, he's not really setting up his shots. I do like that he's going to the body here a lot. But again, staying on the line with his opponent. Now, I'm not sure that Errol Spence is going to be able to land punches that close and that short. Um, but I do know that Errol Spence will be landing some body shots as well. Even though Peterson looks like he has pretty decent body defense. Um, again... It's not important like what punches they're there. It's just important that we recognize that Peterson's getting stuck on the line with Diaz, right? And Diaz is not a big puncher, right? But he's getting cracked with some shots that look like they do hurt anyway. And I think that's going to be a huge problem if he decides to fight Errol Spence that way. <clears throat> Again, good body shots, right? And that's something I think is going to be very important because... Um, Errol Spence usually goes to his high guard for defense, and I don't know how well he's able to protect his body because I haven't seen anybody really go to the body with the left hand. D 
do, do, do. Give me one second, guys. Sorry about that, guys. Like I said, still a little under the weather. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, again, the body shots, I think, are going to be really interesting uh, to see how Errol Spence deals with them. Um, but they're not going to mean that much if Errol Spence uh, is able to catch Peterson on the line after he throws them. So Peterson's really going to need to work on getting off the line again. Beautiful setup right here. Just giving him a couple probing shots. Boom. Boom, bring that high guard up, boy, boom, and then goes to the body, right? And again, Peterson ducks down to the body, right? And and uh, I'm not sure if he thought it was going to be a headshot, but he ducks, the, he ducks the hook, even though he still gets caught with it on the body. But Peterson's showing that he's very crafty, you know? And I think that, again, um, the high guard, right? That's something that Errol Spence does a lot. The high guard is going to be a huge problem for Errol Spence uh, in seeing that left hook to the body coming. Now, we don't want to see that, right? That's a little too much, you know, pushing and whatever, you know. Calm down, Peterson, because Errol Spence, I promise you, he's better at fighting like that than you are. <laughs> Controlling him, not bad. You know, some interesting stuff for sure. Going to the body. It'll be really interesting to see if this is an effective strategy for fighting Errol Spence, right? Because we haven't really seen anyone take it to Errol Spence like this. Um, now, while we do know that Errol Spence, is, he does fight very well on the inside, he gets a lot lower than Diaz is getting, even though he's so much taller, bends his legs more, and he keeps space with his left hand so much better that I, I wonder how, how effective... Um, Peterson will be at smothering Errol Spence um, when Errol Spence is so good at creating space. Um, I guess we could do round three too, but um, I just want to talk about some of this stuff. Now, <clears throat> it's really interesting, like the psychology behind Peterson, because we saw some ways that he had a lot of success, you know, um, stopping Diaz from even setting his punches up, right? Uh, just by taking a step back or controlling his lead hand. Um, we saw some ways of him uh, setting up his own offense and stopping Diaz from having any offense or any any um, any recourse behind him um, simply by moving off the line, right? But all these things are very inconsistent in Peterson's game. You know, you wonder why he moves away from these strategies if if they're working for him, right? Why does he have these inconsistencies in his fight plan? Right, because round one and round two looked completely different, um, and it's arguable that um, Diaz won round one. I think the commentators gave him round one, Diaz, but I'm not sure, you know. And I wasn't scoring it; I was just watching the technique and the styles of fighting. Um, I don't usually get too into like scoring fights. I don't really care that much, but um, but really interesting to see that that Peterson fights so differently in the two rounds. Um, obviously, you know, making adjustments is important, but why does he get away from the parts of the fight that are working for him, right? Um, is it because he has that, that whole um, flawed competitor's mindset where 
um, where you move on from something that works so that you can do something else, so that you can dominate your opponent in another fashion, right? I think that's very common against like you know great competitors. They want to beat you in every avenue to show that they're really better than you, um, and that's kind of not a product of them wanting to fight and beat you so that everyone else can see that you beat them but that's so that they can know that they beat you you know you, i don't know if you guys get what i'm saying it's not like really boxing related but it's just a, a an interesting competitor's mindset but regardless peterson does get away from the things that work well for him notice that we saw him uh, doing a lot of great fainting and probing, right? And he's able to get Diaz up against the ropes. Um, and then <clears throat> later on in the round, after being able to do that, da, 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 boom, left hook to the body, he just started walking in on Diaz, right? And allowing Diaz to throw punches at him, you know? Allowing Diaz to fight him on the inside because he stopped setting his punches up. You know, why would he get away from a strategy that's working so well for him? Right? It just doesn't make any sense, you know. And I think, to be honest, um, if Peterson can maintain a consistent outlook on the fight, if he can consistently be probing, if he can consistently be feinting, using that active guard that he showed in the first 30 seconds of the fight, if he can consistently be um, moving off the line after he throws punches, um, and not a, and controlling Errol Spence, you know, using the lead hand to control Errol Spence and stop Errol Spence from setting up his punches like he likes to, um, Peterson can make this a great fight, you know. Uh, now, barring a body shot knockout like in the likes of Matisse, I don't think this is going to be a one-sided fight in any way, shape, or form. Um, even if um, Peterson did everything that I said and he did it all perfectly, I still think that Errol Spence is going to be a live fighter in the fight. I don't think you can you can ever say that um, that he's going to get dominated, right? Well, until he fights Crawford, in my opinion. Um, even though Crawford's so tiny, you know, I think he might be a little small, but I do think that Crawford's going to smash him. Um, but but I don't think that Peterson has the the ability to to shut Errol Spence out. Um, and even if he did all of those techniques perfectly, you know, uh, very similarly to how well Kel Brook was doing, um, or we perceived him to be doing, like when the fight was live, um, Errol Spence still has that knockout power. You know, he still has, he's still tough, he's still gritty, you know, and that's what's going to make this such an interesting fight is that Peterson is also very tough and also very gritty. Uh, he's just not as strong as, as Errol Spence is. But anyway... Um, I'm going to do two rounds now of the, the Kelbrook, Errol Spence fight, and then uh, I guess I'll do a prediction video. Maybe I'll chop some footage and stuff while I go to Starbucks or something, and then I can talk about that stuff too. Anyway, um, glad to be back, guys. Thanks.